Hey Stingrays! In this video, I'm going to show you a really cool resource that you can use in your college planning. It's called a common data set. This is an accountability measure that all universities have to report out after a admission cycle. Um, so generally, they report these out maybe in the summer um, or definitely by about October timeframe um, for the, the admission cycle that took place during that previous year. So you can Google search this, Google search common data set and then the name of any university and you'll be able to very easily locate. We're gonna start off with my alma mater, uh, the University of Florida since it's right here on top. When you do this Google search, it's usually the very first thing that's returned on this search right at the top. And when you click that, it takes you to the school's website and takes you to the page where they house the common data set information. And so you'll notice that the common data sets for all the previous years are also accessible and you could certainly look through those. I would say the most recent one is the most valuable and up to the last three could definitely give you some um, indication of how much the school has maybe changed over the last couple of years or potentially remain consistent in the profile of student who is being accepted um, and the things that they review as important in the application process. So let's jump right on in to this most recent common data set for the University of Florida. University of Florida uses a, the Word document um, formatting. Some universities have their own formatting that they use. They get a little fancy, um, but the content and the sections are all the same and in the same order. The section that you're most interested in is section C. So if we scroll past A and B to locate section C, which is the first time first year freshman admission. So this tells you the number of students who applied and that were admitted and some specific information about the admitted class, which is really important um, and valuable insight for you. And so one of the very first things that I think is uh, important to look at, if the university mentions it, would be section C5, which is the distribution of high school credits or units required and or recommended. Um, they're all going to have this required list here. And our state of Florida high school um, requirements, credit requirements align to the state university systems. Um, so that would look very familiar to you. But some universities will actually have additional information here of units that they recommend. And it's typically greater than the ones that are required. For example, Florida State, when I looked at that this summer, although two credits of world language is all that is required, uh, four is actually what's recommended. So that would be great information if the university provides that, if that's a university that you want to get into, um, is really to work towards the recommendation. The next section that um, I, this is my favorite, it's very important, C7, the relative importance of each of the following academic and non-academic factors in your first time, first year, degree seeking, freshman, admissions decision. So when an admissions officer is reviewing your application, these are generally the factors that uh, they're going to be reviewing through the course of that application. And this gives you whether the things that they're reviewing they consider to be very important, important, considered, and not considered. So on every single common data set, these are going to be marked differently. This is specific to the University of Florida. This is what they're telling you when they review an application. The things they, they uh, look at as very important would be the things that they have marked here. The things that are important are here, considered and not considered. And so it would be important for you, it would be valuable for you if you would really like to get into a specific university, is to align to the things that they review as very important and important in their admission process. And that would give you maybe a leg up. The next section that is important to look at or helpful to look at is this C9 through 12, the freshman profile. So this is all of the um, all of the applicants who are admitted. This kind of gives you a breakdown of some really important details. And what I want to draw your attention to is the test score ranges and GPA. So starting with test score, looking at SAT, 
ACT is also listed here, uh, but we are an SAT district. We use PSAT and juniors take the SAT in the spring. So I'm going to look at this specifically, but certainly if you're taking the ACT or have taken the ACT, uh, you could look at these scores as well. But looking at this percent of first time, first year freshman students with scores in each range, what this means is based on the SAT evidence-based reading and writing section and math sections, Within each score range, it's giving you the number of students who were admitted, what percentage of the, the distribution of where they fell in the score ranges. So the students who were admitted through the 2021 cycle of the application cycle, 44% of those had a SAT evidence-based reading and writing score of uh, somewhere between seven and 800. Of the students admitted on the SAT math, 46.6% of them had between 7 and 800. Of the students admitted, 49.4% of them had between a 600 and 699 in the evidence-based reading and writing section, and 44% of them had between a 600 and 699 on the SAT math. And then you can see that of the students admitted, the, the percentages really drop off once we get to the 500 score range mark and below. And so what this information tells you um, is a couple of things. Either if you're young enough, you're in the freshman and sophomore year of your high school journey, this gives you something to plan toward and maybe study for. And even if you're a junior and you've taken the test for the first time and you maybe fall in Let's say you fall in the 500 to 599 range. Let's say you were a 590 and you really want to increase your chances of getting into Florida. It would be worth your time to study again and get yourself into that 600 range. And if you're in that 6 to 699 range, you significantly um, increase your chances of being a strong applicant if you can get yourself into the 7 or 800 range. So that information kind of helps you understand what's your target SAT score and whether or not after an attempt you may or may not need to retake the test. The other piece of information that it gives you is whether or not this school is a REACH match or safety school for you. So um, the REACH schools are schools where based on those mid-range GPAs, they're just above. So perhaps you fall in this category here or maybe even in the low 600s and you're looking at this saying, I see this distribution of percentage of students accepted within these score ranges and this might be a reach for me based on SAT. Or perhaps you're solidly here in the mid-range somewhere in that 700, you know, just close to 700 or really solidly in the range above 700 and you stand a really good chance. That would be a match school for you. And then we can look at that same information with ACT. They also provide this information for GPA in Section C11. So this gives you the breakdown, the percentage of students admitted, and what GPAs they had based on the 4.0 scale, which is the unweighted scale. So out of the students who were admitted, 39% of them had a 4.0. 45% of them fell between 3.75 and 3.99. And we can keep going down. And then we see that if there's no, there's no number here, none of the students who were admitted had these GPAs here. So again, this gives you some information. If you're early on enough in your high school career, you know where you need to fall and what sort of GPA you're aiming for. If you've already got a GPA very solidly established, like let's say in your junior year and certainly at senior year, it's not going to change too much, then this gives you the information of whether or not this school is a reach match or safety school for you. And that helps you determine how many you know, of these schools in each category you should be applying to. And as you're narrowing down and building your college list, this information gives you some insight to that. So let's take a look because um, the University of Florida is very is very competitive to get into. So that's why you see those score ranges so high. But if we take a look at a school that is not as um, as competitive to get into, maybe like the University of North Florida, we can Google search that information and pull up their common data set. 
And now UNF does use a different format than Florida, so this is great. Uh, what we're looking at here is first time, first year admission. So again, the content is the same. That's the section we're looking for, section C. And we can scroll down and see, okay, UNF also doesn't indicate any units recommended. Here is their breakdown of what they consider to be very important and then what is in the important considered and not considered categories. And if we go down to the SAT breakdowns, we will see some slightly different numbers. So again, Florida is very competitive to get into. And we saw in this 500 to 599 range that out of the students who were admitted, 6% of them had in that 500 to 599 range. Whereas to get into UNF, the students who were admitted, about 37% of them fell in this range. And so you, we can use this information to determine whether or not a school is really competitive to get into because these distributions of test score breakdowns will be different. Um, and again, we can use this information to say this might be, this school may be more of a safety school for me, whereas Florida was a match or a reach school for me. And we can use the same information with ACT should we take that. And then looking at GPA, we can also see that the distribution of GPA breakdown is a little different. And so they actually even have, um, they, they break down a little bit less concisely than Florida did because Florida had that 4.0 and then 375 to 399. 3.5 and so on. So UNF is reporting from 3.5 and higher, from 3.25, 18%. Remember, this is right about right about here with Florida where we had no percentages. Um, so we can see that the percent breakdowns here and where the GPAs fall for the students who were admitted to get into the University of North Florida. So we could do this over and over again. We could Google search any university we were interested in, find this information on their websites, read through any of the information in this section um, would be great. Those are just the top three that I would recommend looking at. Um, and, and this information would be invaluable to you as a ninth or 10th grader who is planning and charting their course selections moving forward, knowing what grades they're aiming for, um, what test scores they're, they're attempt, they want to earn, um, and really aligning themselves to maybe have a better chance of getting into that dream school, having an insight to the college application process. Um, so I hope that you found this video really informative and thanks so much for watching.